What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Making Podcasts Great Again. I am your tech stuff guy, Jay Nog, and we are here, of course, with the President of the United States of Mar-a-Lago of America, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Mr. President, how are you today? Oh, it's gloomy. It's a gloomy. It's a gloomy time for our country, tech stuff. You know, the weather outside right now is very gloomy. It's our economy, our country is being led by a disgraceful document thief. Uh, we've lost many lives recently, very important MAGA lives. I don't know if our country's ever been in a worse position than it is now. I think now it might be, I think it might be the worst. I think it might be the worst our country has ever been, worse than civil war, worse than slavery. Worse than the uh, the Holocaust. I think worse it's worse. Worse than Vietnam. Well, I said slavery and Holocaust. I mean, I mean, now Viet- Vietnam is not as bad. I'm just as going slavery. wars. So I was just going through wars. Well, I was going bigger than wars. I go bigger than wars. Well, our country was kind of torn apart during Vietnam. Well, you know what? That was because we had radical left people protesting and not supporting our troops, not being nice people, you know, just having sex in huts and fields and Woodstock. It's a real disgrace. Those protests, did you enjoy them at all? Because didn't lots of women remove their shirts and burn bras and things like that? So Sure. A lot of a lot of hairy women with disgusting bodies. Very oh yes, it was very it was a very sexy time, tech stuff. Thank you for reminding me of that. I almost puked. <laughs> okay. My apologies. Now Mr. President no one has really mentioned these classified documents that have been found at Mar-a-Lago. I haven't heard anything about classified documents and the word Trump put together in a sentence in a while. And it just keeps coming up with Biden. Um, Sleepy Joe, the fifth trove of documents found in his uh, mansion in Delaware. This is the fifth round of documents found. Now, I have lots of questions about this. One, do you think this is an honest mistake and he's just an old man and forgets where he puts things or these were calculated and planned by Hunter and uh, by the Biden administration? No, I think it's total calculation. I think, remember I was declassified Bay and I de- declassified everything like that? Yes. Uh, he's, he's classified klutz because everything's classified. I think some, I'll be honest with you. I'm actually going to say something nice about Sleepy, stupid, sloppy Joe. <laughs> I think that he, <clears throat> excuse me. I think that he probably made a mistake recently. The more recent ones from when he was a failed vice president for fake president Obama. Mm-hmm. I think those, he was already getting sleepy. And he might have been like, hey, Jack, let me get some of these Chinese takeout menus and some of these drawings my granddaughter did and some of these classified docs, Jack. <laughs> that was probably sleepy Joe. But they found documents. Are you listening? Mm-hmm. Excuse me. They found documents from when he was a senator. That was like 82 years ago when he was actually probably knew what he was doing. How do you explain those? Can that be sleepy? No, I don't think so. I think that was sneaky. So we're dealing with two Joes. We're dealing with sleepy Joe and sneaky Joe. And I don't like either of them. And they're both bad for the country. It's like that. Remember Double Impact? Not the porn. But the, the 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 Van Dam, remember Van Dam? I do remember the Van Dam movie. And he, he, was, twins. he was twins, yes. And one was a very tough guy, and one was a big pussy. That's like yes. sloppy. That's like sleepy and sneaky Joe. One's a real creepy tough guy, fake tough guy, but sneaky, and the other just has no clue. And they, neither of them knows karate, so they're a lot worse than Van Dam. Now, do you think? the Democrats are doing this on purpose, like blowing the whistle on themselves. So Joe Biden does not run in 2024. I don't think the Democrats are that, you know, 
I think there's a few tough people in the Democratic Party, but most of them are weak. They wouldn't do this. Right. You know, Nancy Pelosi was tough. You know, big tits Pelosi. I don't, I don't, mm. I think she, she's somebody who could pull off that maneuver, but she's, a, you know, she took, she stepped away from leadership. I don't think they have the tough people who would do that move. I think it's just a stupid, sloppy, sleazy, sneaky, sneezy, snoopy, snuffleupagus party. <laughs> Okay. And notice I didn't say sexy because we have the sexy ones. We have the Lauren Boberts and the, you know, I saw recently on Bill Maher, I was passing, I don't watch Bill Maher, but I got, you know, I was channel surfing for 55 minutes on Friday. Right. And, and cut. Nancy Mace, you got to look up this. I'm putting this right now. Now she, she's not a Trump supporter, so I don't like her, but Nancy Mace. Let me look at this. Nancy. This is a, by the way, she's on her third marriage. Okay, so how about that? Uh, we have that in common. She's got big breasts. We both, I like big breasts, so we have that in common. Actually, a very pretty woman, but she's a nasty woman. But you know, sometimes you need a nasty woman. A, a Is she friend. former military? Oh, she went to the Citadel. She probably took a lot of semen there. <laughs> Even though that's not, you know, Navy, you get what I'm saying. That was a, we call that a presidential pun. Uh, she she does have large breasts, Mr. President, and um, military, and she can support my troop. Seems like a nice woman. Have you had any um, interactions with her privately? Well, uh, private? No, not yet. Unfortunately, she's uh, not. She hasn't met me privately, but hopefully, we can. Uh... And I would be nice if we could get that uh, potentially going, but it's somebody I'm, in, you know, she was very, she was very strong on Bill Maher. That's that's what I was impressed with. And now, she didn't vote to impeach yeah. me. She didn't vote to impeach me. So that's you know what that's like our, that's our little icebreaker. You know, oh, you have big breasts and didn't impeach me. Nice <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> It's a nice icebreaker. <laughs> but like I said, I didn't watch. I didn't watch Bill Maher. I was just passing the, uh, passing the channel. Now, follow up to my question: If the Democrats are behind this, you don't think they're smart enough to be behind this? If they if they were behind this, and they didn't want Sleepy Joe running for president in two thousand twenty four, which would be fucking nuts, um, that he would be if he if he did win, he'd be a president at age like eighty six and eighty seven. That's that's out of control, but um, well, we got. A, would, we got a, I didn't realize we had such a. Usually, we get radical left tech stuff guys. We got a MAGA tech stuff guy today. Who would represent the I didn't Dems? Deny it. I, I'm, 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 uh, I'm both. I, I ride both lines here. Now, oh, okay, so like a Marjorie Taylor Green in the gym locker room. <laughs> Who do you think would represent the Democrats for president if they're trying to push out Sleepy Joe? Well, obviously, you got to go with the invisible vice president, Koala Bear Harris, is going to be somebody with, you know, she's going to be in the mix mm -hmm. because not only because she's mixed race, but because she's the vice president. But then you got to go Pete Buttigieg. Everybody likes Pete Buttigieg. There's another woman. I forget her name. Um, she Lauren she, Bubbert? Not Bobert. Terry Lake? No. I don't not any of your ladies. I think a Democratic woman who is Telsey Gabbert. Is that is that her name? Oh, she's on Fox now. She has horrible skin and bad teeth. Although she's very she has whenever she's on TV, she like kind of has like a sweaty tan chest, like an 80s softcore. So I kind of <laughs> she throws mixed signals because she has the she has the teeth of a British gargoyle. <laughs> the skin of Manuel Noriega, but the chest of a steamy 80s Cinemax movie. And she's got nice hair. So it's a, you're, you're getting it like, am I turned on? Am I barfing? I don't know what the hell I'm getting with 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 Tulsi, Tulsi uh, Gabbard. But, uh, you know, there's, you know, you, maybe you take a few drinks and all of a sudden you, don't, you say, close your mouth. I don't want to see your teeth. <laughs> and all of a sudden you're going, okay, I can put up with the bad skin because you got the nice hair and the sweaty the sweaty Cinemax chest. Okay. But she's not, she left the Democratic Party. 
She came to Fox News. She's an independent. You could always hop back. Don't don't politicians do that all the time? There's no rules being a politician. No, they really don't text stuff. Okay. They do maybe one hop. Oh, one hop. You can't do two hops. You can't do. You do two hops and and then then flip flop and then it's hip hop. You hippity hippity hip hop. You don't stop. (laughs) The hippity hippity flip flop. (laughs) Okay. So um, that's that's not a very uh, good choice for uh, Democrat. Pitta Judge isn't isn't horrible. I just don't know if people are. are going to elect a, a gay man as president. Well, you know, I think it's more they don't want that, you know, his, his husband is a very, you know, at least give me one strong gay, like a leather, like if he was married to like a leather gay, you'd be like, okay, we're getting like kind of the mild mannered, I teach high school gay. And then the, I go to bars with the police academy people type gay. Right. That would be, but instead they're like too mild mannered. It's like, you're not giving me, it feels like you're trying to be soft gay. And sometimes you want a hard gay. And sometimes you want Ben gay. That's bringing us to our new sponsor, Ben gay. Mike Pence loves it. He's a traitor, Ben gay. Uh, a soft gay versus a hard gay. I, I never heard of that before. Um, well, I guess that does make sense. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll have to find out. But it's also amazing that uh, the committee has not been mentioned. Um, the lawsuits against you haven't been mentioned. Um, anything about criminal charges against you? You've you've been you've been buried in the negative news right now for Biden. Do you think they're coming down on him as hard as they should? Because I feel for you, they really came down on you hard trying to really, um, you know, take you to prison. I feel like they're being a little soft on Sleepy Joe. What are you, what's your opinion on that? No, I think they're being totally soft. You know, he's just because he's cooperating with authorities and that he made an accident doesn't mean he shouldn't get the death penalty. <laughs> what he did is a disgrace. He's a sitting president, and he's a disgrace. And I think they're finally just getting a little bit of a clue. They're finally getting a little bit of a clue. How about that? Like a little a little clue from the fake news media. They're going, oh, it turns out that Donald Trump, our greatest president, might not have been wrong when he said Sleepy Joe was a sleepy, sleazy, sneaky son of a bitch. A lot of alliteration in this podcast today. I love it. Oh. Now, when it... it <laughs> when it when it comes down to you, they only found documents in Mar-a-Lago, and that was once, correct? Uh, no, that was more than once, but that's okay. We'll say once. Okay, we'll do once. But f- five different didn't times. Find the ones when I when we took Ivana to get the, uh, you know, in the what's the guy at the funeral home? Like a six to tube and the chemicals. Oh, there. Oh, that's the person uh, who carries it. The the. Mortician? Oh, there you go. Uh, Morticia from Adam's family. <laughs> when they, you know, when they were funneling the chemicals into her, I said, okay, and here, let's just roll up some of these documents. And if you could just funnel those right into her poop shoot as well, and we'll bury her in a golf course. So, like you said, only one. You funnel documents into your, one of your ex wives. That's better than what mel- melatonin takes in her ass. <laughs> oh my goodness um yeah I, I just find it uh very amusing that there there's no bad talk about you right now and they're very soft on sleepy joe right now and i'm wondering when the press um releases the fury on him or maybe it won't happen because he's our president acting president in the white house We'll see. We'll see. They seem to like their fake president, so they're giving him, you know, extra respect, which is pathetic, because that's how you fail a country. When you give a fake president too much respect, you destroy a country. How many more instances do you think he has to have? It's the fifth time. What number will it hit where, you know, people go, okay, enough is enough? I think 10. 
I think once it gets to double digits, people will be like, this is a total joke, a complete disaster. Our country can't do this. Even the Democrats, I think, would be like, 10 is too much. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the AFC and NFC championship games this weekend. Mr. President, who are you taking in these games? Well, it's very clear. We have a great friend on the, on the San Francisco 49ers called Nick Bosa. You know Nick Bosa? Very talented. Yes, yeah, very NFL talented. sack leader. One of, one of the great MAGA athletes. I think maybe the be, he might be the best MAGA athlete, I think, if we were to put together a list of, of all the great athletes that are MAGA. Probably the best. Uh, I mean, Herschel wasn't wasn't bad. Everybody's current. Excuse me. You don't think I know Hershey Walker? It's called current. It's called right okay. now. I don't think you take Tom Brady. Away. Well, I don't know if Tom Brady's still in Aaron Rodgers. We're not, we're not sure about, but okay. What do you, what do you not like Nick Bosa? Are you against? I'm just saying that there are better player? players. There there are better are players who who yeah. Well, if if, if right Rodgers now, and Brady are both you MAGA. To, excuse me. Excuse yeah. me. You're picking a team right now. And you can take 83, you can take Sleepy Brady, because he's the same age as Sleepy Joe. <laughs> or you can take Nick Bosa, prime defensive player of the year level player. Who are you taking? Uh, I mean, I, I guess you're right. I would take Nick Bosa right now. Oh, he, go oh, thank oh, he guesses I'm right. Very nice to guess. Well, I know. I don't have to guess. It's called knowing. <laughs> and Nick Bosa, and the fact that he's doing it in Nancy Pelosi's district, and he's not being ruined by the radical left policies or the homeless people or Nancy's big tits. The fact that he's so focused and destroying people and a lot of blacks, by the way, he's going after a lot of, it's almost like he's law enforcement on the field. So we back the blue, we back the blue and we back the Bosa, the blue Bosa. And you got to go San Francisco to okay. be Philadelphia, which is a disgusting city. And they have an African-American quarterback. And then in the other one, and I remember I picked, I love this guy last year, Joe Burrow. I said he's going to the Super Bowl. And where did he go, Tech Stuff? To the Super Bowl. Well, thank you. Finally, you didn't have to guess that one. You knew that one. It's good to hear. <laughs> yes. And I think he's going to go into Mahomie. And he's going to destroy Mahomie for the fourth straight time. Oh, Patrick Mahomes. Oh, all he does is win, except when he plays Joe Burrow. And then Joe Burrow. So we have Burrow and Bosa. Okay. Double B. Not the kind of thing I usually like. I prefer double D or more, but we'll take double B. Burrow Bosa. I like those picks. Those, those are my picks too. So I agree. Oh, and now he says those are his picks too. He, he probably had Giants, Eagles in the Super Bowl, like a total <laughs> nonsense pick. That'd be impossible, but maybe. Well, I, I know that. I know that, but I'm not sure you knew that. I thought it was very possible. Mr. President, the next piece of news I want to talk to you about. Now, your name is in the news in one negative aspect. Um, Georgia is trying to find a way to file criminal charges against um, you and anyone in your administration for trying to overturn the 2020 election. Do you think that will succeed in another witch hunt for a President Trump and Trump administration? Or this is just to, again, attempt to drag your name through the mud and you will get up out of that mud, dust yourself off, and spit I'll keep mud. the mud on my face. I'll keep oh. the mud on my face for Halloween. <laughs> what I would say to you right now is, right, right now, I'll tell you, the district attorney in Bullshit County, Georgia, is, her name's, I think, Fanny. Fanny, I think, is her first name. You know what Fanny is a synonym for? A cinnamon for? Oh, uh, yes, but. There you go. Or ass. Or ass. You could even yes. say ass. We're not okay. a Christian podcast. And she's being an ass. And she's a black ass. <laughs> so she's like a black donkey walking around going, trying to ruin everything. Trying to ruin everything. So. No, I don't think she's going to succeed. I think they're very upset that I had such a strong showing with black men when we had a great candidate, Herschel Walker, who also had an election stolen. And they keep saying, I tried to steal an election. And I would say to you this, tech stuff, if somebody walked into your house and stole your computer that you're doing the podcast on, and then you ran outside and you told your neighbors, that person stole my computer and your neighbors joined you, and tried to get the computer back. 
Would the police in your town accuse you of stealing? No. Of course not. But that's not the world we live in when it comes to radical left politics. So, Georgia, you are not on my mind. I'm not taking a midnight train to you. And you're a disgusting place full of election fraud. And your DA ass is a real nasty fanny. She's a fanny <laughs> pack. <laughs> Not a fan of fanny packs. And Mike Pence likes fanny packs. I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> now, Mr. President, you also uh, you know, he would attended... walk in, when, when Mike Pence would walk in with his fanny pack, <laughs> and that we would say, we would say that's a that's a bag, and we you know it rhymed with bag, and it sounded <laughs> it started with an F. That's what we would call Mike Pence when he would walk in with a fanny pack. Anyway. <laughs> Now, as president, this past weekend, you did have to attend a funeral and Diamond of, of Diamond and Silk, who were strong supporters of you during your campaign, Diamond passed away. And you were there. You, you This was a little politically charged. You did make a, a speech or two and mentioned some things that had nothing to do with had nothing to do with um, diamond or silk. But how come you didn't use the funeral to, you know, just for diamond, just to pay respects for diamond, no other um, political agenda? because their legacy was supporting the political agenda. In other words, Daphne was very strong on MAGA and patriotism. So when she has a funeral, she doesn't want it. She wants it to be about her life and her life was dedicated to MAGA, was dedicated to me, was dedicated to our great country. And so I think when destiny, you know, shows up in heaven she's gonna look she wants to see that we talked about her great legacy mm -hmm. and i think that's totally normal i mean it's you know obviously if she was not political we wouldn't have talked about politics but she was a very strong politics person and and it was also fun that i got to meet silk for the first time uh, at, the, that, at the I was, funeral i was gonna ask you about that diamond and silk uh, it was kind of like a, a Ren and Stimpy, a, a Tom and Jerry, you know, they were always, always together. And you, you said you didn't know there was a Silk. Did you think Silk was Diamond's last name, like Diamond Silk? Or because she, she was always with another person. And when they visited your office, there were two of them. I'm just well, confused. I thought, no, I thought it, no, no, excuse me. I thought it was Diamond Silk. You're right. I thought it was one name like that. Hello, Miss Silk. Oh, you can call me Diamond, okay. sir. Oh, okay. And then she had this slightly shorter, fat, brown uh, per th uh, item next to her that I thought was her like bulldog. That turned out to be silk. And I think when I said, oh, you have a very nice black bulldog, I think she <laughs> took that as meaning like I'm, you know, like, oh, she's tough, which she is, by the way, now that I've gotten to know silk, she's very tough. But I think they took it as a compliment, not really, I meant it literally like Diamond Silk and her Black Bulldog. <laughs> Was she fine being called the Black Bulldog? I don't know. I never I never listened to her. She would just bark <laughs> in the corner. I didn't I didn't hear what she was saying. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Um as funerals go, how would you rate Diamond's funeral? You've been to many, many funerals. Uh, there were more black people than I cared to be present. Okay. But other than that, I would say it was a B plus. It was a B plus funeral. Very nice, very solid mm -hmm. funeral. And it was nice of you to attend the whole time and speak at it. And you were a man of your word. You did say you were going to be there and you were there. 
and showed up for them. And I'm sure uh, all her family and loved ones uh, were very excited that you were in attendance. Oh, they were, they were, they were, they were excited. And, I, and I, they were so happy that I gave them a 20% discount on my appearance fee. That's, that's very nice of you. So you, you did charge them to appear. But I, excuse me, not, but of course I charged, but I charged them less. I gave them the, we call it the reparations discount. Usually when someone says they're going to attend someone's funeral, it's usually assumed that there is no price tag attached to the attending of a funeral. Well, those are, we call those failed funerals. You can either have top price talent, high priced quality talent, or, or you don't. How about that? Okay. I, well, now, now, now I understand. Mr. President, Making Podcasts Great Again is also brought to you by th this company right here. I found them like late 2022, and I subscribe to tons and tons of things. I always lose track of what I'm subscribed to. I'm, I'm, I'm that guy who says you get the five free months or you get five months for a dollar and then they'll charge you after. And I always forget to cancel after. And I'm paying for these subscriptions. I joined rocketmoney.com and rocketmoney.com is awesome because they keep track of all my subscriptions. And I saved hundreds of dollars before the holidays because there were things I was subscribed to that I had no business being subscribed to. And I totally forgot I even subscribed to half the things. So I saved a ton of money. Everyone should check out Rocket Money. It's going to save you money too. The app shows all your subscriptions in one place and then cancels for you whatever you don't still want. You don't have to wait on holds with three different customer service representatives. You don't have to send an email to the info email and then wait for an email to come back and go back and forth and the transfer you. Rocket Money does everything for you. Rocket Money even finds subscriptions you didn't even know you were paying for. Maybe you were being double charged for a subscription. Rocket Money takes care of it for you. To cancel subscription, all you have to do is just press cancel. Rocket Money takes care of the rest. It is so easy. It is so convenient. Everyone should sign up today. Right now, get rid of your useless subscriptions and go to rocketmoney.com slash MPGA. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. Save me a ton of cash. That's rocketmoney.com slash MPGA. Cancel your unnecessary subscriptions. Don't pay for two subscriptions. Go right now, rocketmoney.com slash MPGA. Also, check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash MPGA. Uh, we had some Patreon Patriots uh, sign up this past week. A uh, few perfect tens came on. A couple of second level Ivanka's came on. So check it out. You have over over a hundred hours of bonus material. You oh, have no, 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 no. Let me interrupt you there. It's like at this point, it's probably two hundred plus. Two hundred plus now. Okay. If we've been doing it a long time. That's right. Podcast. You have Kavanaugh's old show on there. You have um, you have, uh, movie reviews on there. You have special guests on there. We have games we play on there for F. Mary Kill back in the day. You can listen to some of the bonus episodes when we first started the Patreon. Uh, listen to the great Fred that. Trump's um, conditions. Right. Yes. Tr excuse me, traditions. He had no conditions. He had strong traditions. What I, I said, he, conditions, the great Fred traditions. Trump traditions. <laughs> there you go. But there's things we've referenced that are still legendary from like 2020. Mm -hmm. that, people, like, that, that are referenced in 2022, 2023. Uh, but we do have, we have the live episode this Wednesday. So as soon as the poor people right. listen to this, they'll have a chance to immediately get on. So we have the live episode. We're going to have the bonus episode uh, this weekend where we decide not live, but for all Patreons, they will get to learn who we, with consultation with our great Patreon patriots and other fans, have decided will be Diamond 2.0. That's right. Very, a very a, a major honor because, you know, we never even officially appointed a an Epstein 2.0, a Sir Jeffrey Epstein 2.0, but Diamond is getting the rare honor of a, a 2.0. 
Great. Diamond 2.0, and you will find out by the end of the weekend who Diamond 2.0 is. Mr. President, we have a couple of more news stories here. There was a mass shooting. I feel like mass shootings are just becoming so regular in our country where they don't even get headlines it's anymore. It's called freedom. It's called Second Amendment, and it's called freedom. Well, it's happened in, in, in Monterey, California. This Radical shooting left. was done at a nightclub um, by an older gentleman. I don't think we've ever had uh, a mass shooter this old before, 72 years old, and his name is Hu Ken Tran. Well, what are your thoughts yeah, on I this? Say, well, first of all, I'm not surprised because Asians, uh, they often age very well. Uh, everybody says black don't crack, but uh, yellow don't mellow. <laughs> They're probably going to cancel me for saying that. But no, uh, Asians, uh, Asians age very well. So maybe he's just sort of like, he may be 72 at heart, but he's just an angry high schooler in terms of how he's aging. Mm -hmm. So, Or was, they tell me that he took his own life, which is, of course, as you know from... Men's rights activist Roy Den Hollanders is the strongest way to prove that you're strong Second Amendment. By but taking I think your own life. I, I don't support what Toucan Sam did in in Monterey, California, although it's a sad thing. But you know, so you, you have it's it, you know, and I want to be respectful because you have difficult feelings, you have victims, you have really nice people uh, who are victims, but you also have a, a strong Second Amendment guy. And it's sort of, you know, so you have very fine people on both sides of the mass shooting. Well, uh, thoughts and prayers with all the victims. And also and, nobody's uh, mentioning the fact that he's trans. Well, I think, I think it's just his name. I don't think he's, he's well, trans. Well, uh, well no, and you're never going to know if he is or not because the radical left media won't let you know that. So, so we have Toucan Sam, who's trans, uh, doing Second Amendment. So it's a, it's a very tough, it's a tough thing. We, we, we say thoughts and we say prayers. I don't say prayers, but other people can pray uh, for the victims because it's horrible. But we also have to realize that Second Amendment is strong as well. So it's tough. You know, I don't think anybody knows where to come down on this issue in this case. You know, there's... Well, I, th I think our country is divided over uh, strong Second Amendment. So no, I don't but think... But I mean on this shooting, I mean on this specific shooting, nobody knows what side to be on. Oh, really? I mean, I think I've determined well, I the case. side already. Well, okay. Well, you know what? I try to be fair. And I'm saying is you have victims and we, we do thoughts for them. Very nice. Yes. I get emotional because <laughs> you do nice thoughts and yes. other people can pray. I don't have to pray. You know, God told me I didn't have to pray. But you do thoughts. And on the other side, you have Second Amendment, which is so strong for our country. So what I'm saying is, it's very tough who you who you side with in a in a in a shooting situation like this. As okay. All right. Um, let's just go to the to our, to our final story. And um, this 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 next man in the news, he has gone over gone after you for years. He's impersonated you on Saturday Night Live and just been so cruel to you. And JL Covan, he's never been on Saturday Night Live. No, no, no. This, this, this gentleman has been on SNL. And whenever he can say something nasty about you, he always goes for it. And um, karma, right? Karma is a funny thing because now he is being brought up on involuntary manslaughter charges for a shooting that happened on set where he shot a gun. There was live rounds in it. And he killed um, a woman working on the movie that right. uh, Alec unlike Baldwin other, was working excuse on. Excuse me. Yes. Unlike the, other, unlike the other story we just discussed where there was mm -hmm. you know, sadness on both sides and you don't know which one to be on. This is a very clear case. Alec Baldwin should get the death penalty. Death penalty? For involuntary manslaughter? That's what they're calling it. But wow. you saw, we just discussed another case that was so much more difficult to see right and wrong. This one is very clearly wrong and horribly wrong. Maybe the most wrong I've ever seen. There are not good, both people on, good people on both sides of this. There was a nice woman doing a job and a radical left terrorist named Alec Baldwin 
Shanna, dead. Mm -hmm. Death penalty. Okay. So you don't think he even should go to trial? They should just hand out the death penalty. Death penalty. <laughs> I have spoken. Okay. So death penalty for him. Um, I, I think he'll, 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 he'll learn his lesson for that, for sure, if he gets a death penalty. So that's the only um, punishment that fits this crime is death penalty for Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin, death penalty. Uh, and isn't the, the thoughts, director of the thoughts. film also being brought up on charges too? No, the, the ugly woman who is, well, the, I think a director and then the not attractive woman who is handling the guns. Right. I think we need to have. The first case, I just think, I, I can't believe anybody who wouldn't see so clearly that the case, the shooter in California is a total sad case on all sides. This is not sad on all sides. I have spoken. Okay. Well, Alec Baldwin, death penalty. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, they're going to court very shortly. Uh, Mr. President, thank you once again for joining us this week and every single week and looking forward to the live episode this Wednesday, everyone. This Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. This Wednesday will be the live episode, and that date is the 25th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time for the live episode for the Perfect 10 Patreon Patriots. Go to rocketmoney.com slash MPGA. I save hundreds with Rocket Money. You can save hundreds with Rocket Money and go check out all the subscriptions that you don't even realize that you are subscribed to. Rocketmoney.com slash MPGA. And of course, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash MPGA with the live episode this Wednesday. Um, for me, uh, just check out my new website, uh, goodyshow.com. I'm looking to bring my solo show around the country to for uh, mental health and uh, suicide prevention. And I will be doing a live show um, in the next few months in New York City. Don't have the date yet, but I will let everybody know we are doing one more live performance in New York City. And um, that's it for me. Mr. President, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you for that. Hey, everybody. Um, you know this shit. My other web, my, my website, jlcommy.com has my other website, my other Patreon. And as far as live shows, sorry about Pittsburgh, but you know, surgery was a real fucking mangled mess. So hopefully I can make up that date in the spring. Um, but as far as shows coming up, Chicago, uh, Newark, no, I got Newark, New Jersey, Chicago, Montclair, New Jersey, Boston, Massachusetts, Washington, DC, Philadelphia, Princeton, New Jersey, and then new hour taping in New York City. So check out my website. Uh, ticket links for everything except uh, DC are up. So get them. And uh, that's it. And in all seriousness, obviously, very sad about the shooting in California. Sorry if that offended some of you. I just, you know, never pass up a chance to make the president look like the piece of shit that he is. So that's it, guys. God help us all.